Hello, it's Moira here and this tutorial in the Daisy Sampler series is going to look at Motive 2 in Section 2. So we're now ready to work Section 2, Motive 2. And this is what our pattern looks like. Remember, we're still working in the round. This is the bright version of the Daisy Sampler. We also have the muted version and the tapestry version. As with the rest of the tutorials, we are going to be working on the muted version. Looking at our repeat for this pattern, it says it's 16 stitches and the repeat is in between these two heavy lines. We've got an O and we've got an I. And each of those two motives have five stitches each with three stitches between them. So when working up to the corner, we take this section and we repeat these 16 stitches over and over until we come to the corner. We then turn our pattern. Now once I've turned the corner, I'm looking for my heavy line and can't see it. And that's because it's there, right at the edge of the pattern. This whole section at this side is our corner pattern. Looking at our work, we can see motive one. And motive one has got a round eight. And if we look closely at our pattern we're about to follow, we also have a round eight there. So because we've already done round eight, I'm going to tick it off. And I always tick it off in the three places because it makes life a lot easier when you're actually lining up your various parts of the chart. So looking ahead now to round nine, round nine is where I'm starting on motive two. Round nine has got no drop trebles in it. It is a round of double crochet into the back loop only. The colour I'm going to be working with in this round is colour B, which is my grey mix. Counting in from the corner, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the stitch I start on. I'm just looking to identify the first stitch in my count and it's that chain, it's the second chain. You can see there in the corner. Counting seven stitches in from the corner, that chain is our first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we've identified the seventh stitch, we join our yarn B with a chain stitch and that secures our yarn. I'm now going to be in the next stitch working a double crochet. And I'm going to work double crochets into the back loop all the way along this side. So I'm going to work double crochets all the way along this side until I get to the corner. And when we get to the corner we'll see the two chains from the previous round. The first chain is the last stitch on this side so we work a double crochet into it then work our two chains and then the next chain is the first stitch on the other side. Continue working all the way around, remembering those two chains at the corner. And now we're back at the beginning. We're going to join the last stitch with the first stitch with an invisible join. I'm going to do a quick recap in case you've forgotten. So get your needle and thread it up with your yarn. Then identify the first double crochet stitch, not the chain stitch, the first double crochet stitch. And we're looking for that V. The pointed part of the V is where we insert our needle underneath the stitch and then we're going to put our needle into the last stitch through the top of it through the rounded section. Then pull your yarn gently through, don't make it too tight or you'll make the stitch too tight and then weave in your yarn at the back of the stitches. So before looking at the pattern, I know I've ended there, I'm now going to turn my work 90 degrees because that is the side that I want to start on this time. I'm now just going to take off that I've done row 9 in all the places down at the bottom, at the side and in the centre and I'm now ready to look at round 10. So for round 10 I'm back to working with colour A. So looking within our repeat lines, we've got one, two, three, four, five double crochets, three drop trebles, 
five more double crochets and three drop trebles. So that's going to be our repeat pattern. However, this time we actually have got a drop treble above where we should be starting. And if we have a drop treble above where we're starting, we always move a couple of stitches to the side. So I'm marking where we're going to start this round. So I'm going to count from the corner chain to the marked stitch. Counting above the grey chain, one, two, three, four, five, six to the marked stitch. So it's quite important to get this stitch correct. So counting from the beginning, I can see where I am at the sixth stitch and I can insert my hook. Now I have my hook in position, I can check that I'm in the right place. I'm checking where I am in relation to the drop treble in round eight. So we can see that that drop trebles are going to line up nice and neatly in that box. And where I've got my hook lines up neatly with the drop treble in round eight. Confident that I'm in the correct place, I can now join my colour A yarn with a chain stitch. And then I'm working one double crochet before I'm ready to do my three drop trebles. So I'm going to work three drop trebles, then it's five double crochets, then another three drop trebles, and this time they line up with the drop trebles from round eight. So looking at what I've done, I've done the part of the repeat pattern, three drops, five doubles in another three drops. So I'm now going back to the beginning of the pattern where there's still five double crochets to actually work. And then that four sections of five double crochets, three drop trebles, five double crochets, three drop trebles, they're the repeat. You repeat all the way until you get to the corner stitches. I'm now nearing the corner, so I'm going to turn my chart so that I'm looking at the chart in the same direction that I'm crocheting in. I'm identifying where I am in the chart by counting the drop trebles in round eight. I can see I'm right at that edge stitch there. So I'm now ready to do five double crochet stitches. The first part of my corner will be these five double crochet stitches. The next part is three drop trebles and I'm always checking to make sure that my stitches are lining up with the drop trebles from round eight. The next part of the corner is five more double crochets. The next stitch the drop treble and that drop treble is going to be worked into the chain stitch from round eight. It can sometimes be a little tricky picking up these chain stitches. And after this drop treble, we've got one more double crochet, which is worked into the chain stitch from the previous round. And then we've got two chain before we turn our chart. And not only am I turning the chart, I'm turning my work so that I can actually face in the same direction that I'm crocheting in. So that's one double crochet and I'm now going to work another drop treble. Again it's into the chain space from round eight and then I've got five double crochets to do. That is the corner section now finished. You can see I'm back to the dark lines and I'm back to working my repeat of five double crochets, three drop trebles, five double crochets, three drop trebles, and that's the repeat that I'm going to carry on working all the way around until I get back to the starting stitch. And once you get back to that initial starting stitch, you should actually have five stitches. The invisible join will be one of those stitches. I'm just about to go and complete my invisible join and that will then be my five stitches. Now round 10 is completed, I'm going to mark it off before looking at round 11. And looking to our pattern for round 11, we've got one drop treble, three double crochets, one drop treble, three double crochets, a drop treble, 
three double crochets, a drop treble, and another three double crochets. So it's one down, three across, one down, three across. And again, that is the repeat that we're going to carry on doing. So as before, we're now going to identify where we're going to start round 11. Identifying where we're starting round 11 is a lot easier this time because we've got the three drop trebles and it's above the first drop treble. So looking at the colour, it's our grey again and we're joining with a chain stitch. And then the next stitch we can see is going to be a double crochet stitch. In fact, it's going to be another two double crochet stitches before we get to our first drop treble. And after that drop treble, we have another three double crochet stitches before the next drop treble. It's then another three double crochets before we are back to the beginning of our pattern repeat, where there's a drop treble before another three double crochets and then another drop treble. And I'm just going to work another three double crochets so that you can then see what the actual um, pattern repeat should look like. And our pattern is a box surrounded by three stitches. And we're going to keep repeating that till we get to our corner section. I'm now at the beginning of the corner section, so I can see I've got a drop treble to do immediately, and then another three double crochets, followed by a drop treble and three more double crochets, another drop treble and another three double crochets before we get to that final drop treble. And after the final drop treble at this side, there's three more double crochets before we get to the corner two chains. So turning the chart so that I can see what the next part of the corner looks like, it's three more double crochets. And once these three double crochets have been worked, we're back with a repeat of our 16 stitches that we did on the previous side. And the repeat is one drop treble, three double crochets, and we repeat this four times to make our 16 stitch repeat. So one drop treble and three double crochets is the repeat you're going to keep repeating all the way around your work. And remembering when you get to the corners, you use your chart to make sure that you get the stitch count correct at the corners. Once round 11 is complete, you should have a series of little boxes separated by three drop trebles all the way around your work. Looking at round 12, we change colours. And just scanning the chart, we can see that there's no crosses. So this round is completely double crochets into the back loop only, nothing else. However, looking at the other versions, Tapestry is the same as our muted version. It's got a different colour just for round 12. But our bright version actually changes colour for the rest of the pattern. So round 12 and round 14 in a different colour. Back to our muted version and we have identified where we're starting. It's quite easy because it's above the drop trebles. And we're joining our colour D this time. And my colour D is a pearl grey. So join the colour D that you're working with, with a chain stitch, and then you're going to work double crochet into the back loop all the way round your work. Remembering at the corners, you're going to add two chain to get around the corner. Now we've done round 12. Quite difficult to see because mine's a really light colour but I'm going to tick it all off and turn my attention to round 13. And if we look at round 13 we can see this is the round that actually makes up our O and our I that I was speaking about before and we're using the V stitch to enable us to do this. 
Remember we encountered the V stitch in motif one and the V means a drop double treble or a double treble stitch into the front loop three rows below. So starting this round we're starting above that drop trebles with colour A and as we usually do we join with a chain stitch. So we've worked that chain stitch I can then see that I've got four double crochets to do before that first drop double treble. And now I've worked my four double crochets I can look at my drop double treble. So remember when you're doing a double treble you have to wrap your yarn twice around your hook. We're then looking to count three stitches down and we're picking up the stitch three rows down and then we're going to work a double treble. Looking at our chart we've got five double crochets to the end of the repeat and then we go back to the beginning and we've got an extra double crochet. So we've got six double crochets to work before we get to the next drop double treble. Remember I work in UK terms so in US terms a double treble is a treble. Just checking on my stitches to make sure that I've actually got the correct stitch count. So I've got one more double crochet to work and now I'm ready to work that first drop double treble in my O. And once I've worked the drop double treble for one part of the O, I've got one double crochet to work and then I'm ready to work the next drop double treble to complete my O. And once I've worked this drop double treble, I now need to work out how many double crochets before the next one. So I have got six double crochets to work before the next drop double treble, which will complete the I within the next box. And once I've finished my I drop double treble, I've got five double crochets to work before the actual pattern repeat is complete. So the repeat of our 16 stitches is one double crochet, one drop double treble, another double crochet, another drop double treble, six double crochets, a drop double treble and then five double crochets. And we keep repeating this all the way until we get to the corner. So I've made it round to the corner and I'm actually at the edge where the corner starts. So I'm looking to work a double crochet. There we go, a double crochet stitch before I work a double treble, a drop double treble for that part of the O. And looking at our chart, we have another double crochet to work before we work the next drop double treble as the other side of our O. Looking at our chart, I'm counting along to see how many double crochets I need to work. And I need to work six double crochets before the next drop double treble. So six double crochets need to be worked before we get to that next drop double treble. And that next drop double treble will be the last one in this side and make up the eye. And after we've worked this final drop double treble, we then have to count how many double crochets till we get to the corner chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets before we get to the corner chains. So working seven double crochets and then when we get to the corner we have two chains to work to get around the corner. And once I've turned my chart and my work around, I can now count how many double crochets it is before that first drop double treble. And it's six double crochets. So do make sure that you're not cut out here. It's actually six double crochets before we actually work that first drop double treble. Once we've worked those double crochets, we're actually past our corner section. 
and then we're back into the pattern repeat that we did on the other side. Continue working your repeat pattern all the way around until you get back to the beginning, to the first stitch. Just make sure when you are working those corners, remember one side of the corner has seven double crochets and the other side of the corner has six double crochets. We've now completed round 13, so let's tick it off and turn our attention to round 14. Round 14 should be looking familiar because apart from a couple of stitches at the corner, it's identical to round 11. So I've worked out where my starting stitch is by counting my V's and then two double crochets after it. And I'm going to join my colour D with a chain stitch. Once I've joined with the chain stitch, I just need to work out how many stitches I have before the next drop treble. And it's two stitches before I have my first drop treble. And then after the drop treble, it's three double crochets, drop treble, three double crochets, drop treble. And that's the pattern all the way to the corner. This is my tapestry version and I just wanted to show this because the drop trebles in this round do not meet up with the drop trebles in round 11. And depending on what colour you worked in round 12, this may be more noticeable than others. You can see in my tapestry version I worked with quite a bright blue, so that's a lot more noticeable than the light grey that I worked in my muted version. So back to our muted version and round 14, we're going to work this pattern repeat all the way to the corner. And now we're at the corner section again and I'm going to speed up this little part here because we've actually worked the first part of this corner section before in round 11. So the first part of the pattern was a drop treble, then three double crochets and then another drop treble. Then we're at the centre between the two boxes with another three double crochets and then the next box is a drop treble, three double crochets and another drop treble. We're now back to the part of the pattern that's new to us. So we have got three double crochets to work. So we've already done one, two, three. So we're going to work our drop treble and then after our drop treble we've got two double crochets to work. You can see one, two. So there we go, working one double crochet and then the second double crochet and then we've got our two chains to get us round the corner. And looking at our chart, once we've gone round the corner, we've got another two double crochets before we've got another drop treble. So working those double crochets before we get to the drop treble and you can always check that your drop treble is in the correct position because it should be lining up with the colour of round 12. It's always useful to look at these little pointers to check that your pattern is actually in the correct place. We now have another three double crochets to go and then that's our corner section completed. So continue with round 14 until you get back to the first stitch and just keep an eye on the chart when you get to your corners. So we've completed round 14, we're now ready to look at round 15. And again this should be another familiar round for you because round 15 is the same as round 10 apart from the corner section. And the same as in round 10 we've actually got a drop treble in the way of where we should actually be starting our chain stitch. And like row 10, I'm going to move two stitches over to the right. And moving two stitches to the right takes me above the second V of my O. So I'm going to be working with colour A and I again, I'm joining with a chain stitch, working my chain, making a double crochet because I've got one double crochet to work before I'm ready to work those three drop trebles. 
and after we've worked our three drop trebles, we've got five double crochets to work. And after we've completed those five double crochets, we've another three drop trebles, and that takes us back to the beginning of our pattern repeat. And looking at the section I've already worked, we've got five double crochets above our row, three drop trebles, another five double crochets, and another three drop trebles. And that's the pattern repeat. We work all the way until we get to the corner. Now I'm back to the corner. So I've got five double crochets to work above the O, then three drop trebles, another five above the I, and then another three, and then we look at the corner section. So I'm going to whiz right into the corner section. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could crochet as quick as this? Now we're back at the corner, I can see that I've got one, two, three, four, and then the two corner chains. I'm just working those four double crochets before the corner, and when I get to the corner, I'll work those two chains to get me round the corner. And I'm going to spin my chart the 90 degrees as usual round the corner and move my work at the same time. So after the corner two chains, I've got four double crochets to work. I've got three drop trebles to work, and after those three drop trebles, that's the end of the corner section. And we're now back to our pattern repeat that we worked on the other side. Continue working this repeat all the way around and just making sure that when you get to the corners, you pay attention to the chart. And now we've finished motive two of section two. So we can tick off our round 15 and we're ready to start with motive three. And motive three can be found in the tutorial called Repeating Motive for All Sections. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please do subscribe to Daisy Knot's channel.